Hello, my name is Ben at the Eco Centre which is in St Kilda Botanical Gardens on the corner of Herbert and Blessington Street. Behind me is a 1960s brick veneer home that's been retrofitted to become a Fire Star Energy rated building. The Eco Centre also has a variety of sustainable living practices and features such as this model worm farm, sewerage management, rainwater harvesting, a community garden, indigenous planting as well as functional planting, surrounding the building timber decking and disabled access ramp. The timbers used are all recycled salvage timbers. And what we have here is a pretty good example of passive solar design. Solar panels positioned in a certain way so that they block the summer heat. In winter, when the sun's at a lower angle, the sun's allowed to come through this glazing and hit a thermal mass floor. The floor consists of a thick quarry tile resting on a bed of concrete rubble, which makes it 75mm thick. The floor absorbs and retains the summer heat which can be emitted into the building as heat after sundown. This building itself has been really interesting in the sense that since it has been properly insulated, we don't have very much in the way of heating or cooling in the building. It's really basically the way it is, it's natural. All of the black and grey wastewater is treated on site. What we have here operates similar to a standard septic system, only that this is a wet worm farm. In this container, food scraps are placed, and below them are three species of worms, all breaking down the wastewater, eating the nutrients, and further purifying the water, which falls to a sump below. The wastewater is then pumped into this reed garden behind me, which is a 30 square metre reed garden with a waterproof membrane liner, which prevents the wastewater from escaping into the subsoil below. Treated water at the back of the reed farm can then be utilised at various other points in the garden, such as watering these citrus trees planted here. So at Echo Centre, we've treated the wastewater and we're utilising it as best possible. And what might come as a surprise to some is that none of these features, including the wet worm farm in front of me with its lid off, actually emit any smell. Our major challenge is getting the wider community to connect and engage in what we're on about. Uh, our primary purpose has been to protect biodiversity, but to do that we need to work with the community and get them to appreciate why they should worry about that, rather than just thinking, well, that's some kind of uh, dishwashing detergent, isn't it? Um, the biodiversity is a very nebulous sort of concept that many people don't relate to, and so we need to uh, create a number of activities and uh, focuses that will, will get people in who might not uh, otherwise start to engage in an environmental organisation. Supported by the Echo Centre, about 15 affiliate groups. They range from friends groups such as the Friends of Westgate Park or the Friends of Port Melbourne's Foreshore to other advocacy groups such as Blue Wedges Coalition, Earthcare St Kilda, the custodians of the local penguin colony as well as doing revegetation projects around the St Kilda area. There's also the Park Community Association that's been landscaping the, around the corroboree tree in St Kilda Junction and veg out community gardens. Hi my name's Jill, myself and Lisa run a project called Carbon Cut out of the Port Phillip Eco Centre. We retrofit low income households with energy saving devices. It's a free service we provide for qualifying residents in the city of Port Phillip. We're currently uh, retrofitting 160 households. That's a follow-on full-scale project from a pilot project last year of 20 households. We install energy-saving light globes, water-saving shower heads, foam seals, draft stoppers, shower timers and fixer flushes in the toilet, as well as information how residents can further reduce their carbon emissions and their energy bills. So the St Kilda Organic Food Co-op has been operating for maybe 20 years. We call it SCOF and every Saturday morning members pay money and get a box of the beautiful organic food and vegetables. You can just come by the Echo House on Saturday morning and check it out and sign up. The education program at the Eco Centre has been going for about four or five years with some ups and downs and a lot of success. It has been awesome. 
Yay. <laughs> We've built gardens, put in rainwater tanks, energy efficiency. We work on practical action with whole school communities. That's working with kids, parents, teachers, volunteers, local community groups, businesses, all figuring things out, learning together to create improvements. We develop visions and strategic plans. We train teachers, have teacher networks, connecting local teachers with each other so they can learn together. From the Eco Centre, the kids are getting uh, first-hand experience with sustainability principles uh, and environmentally friendly principles that they may hear a lot about uh, through school, but this is actually seeing it in action. Hi, my name's Pam O'Neill and I'm an artist in St Kilda. I'm also on the Committee of Management of the Echo Centre. The Echo Centre for the past 10 years has been working closely with the artists of St Kilda and Port Phillip. Last year there was an artist in residence, Carmel Wallace, who did an artwork which was based on all the plastic that she found in the beach around St Kilda. She, she stayed here for two weeks, collected plastic and from that made an artwork. It's a companion piece to one that she did in Portland Bay. I'm currently working in partnership with the Echo Centre and with the Boonarong Foundation who are custodians of the area. My project White Gloss is really helping people to try to see what it was like before white man came, to see what the land was like, how the land was used for generations and generations, thousands of generations really, and how people lived here and lived here well and didn't degrade the land for many, maybe 40,000 years. Hi. My name is Waltraud Reiner. I'm a volunteer at the Eco Centre in St Gilda and I run the Wellbeing Programme under the blue hat. We run quite a lot of programmes, one of them being the Knitting Programme. Another one, Sunday afternoon teas with inspirational speakers and the Bird Watching Programme. The Bird Watching Programme is very interesting as it takes in many parks in St Gilda. We not always are able to see birds, but we hear them. The aim of Puffin is to promote the idea of growing food and also to educate people on how to grow food. With Council, we organise gardening workshops in the city of Port Phillip, usually held at um, a community garden, where it's easy to demonstrate to people how to grow food. We also share resources and try and create alternative ways of distributing food. Puffin won the Civic Award of the Year in 2008 and I think the success of the network is just the enthusiasm that people have and a local restaurateur who after participating in one of the Puffin forums felt really inspired and is making environmentally friendly changes to his restaurant and is sourcing food from local and sustainable food sources and is really getting the message out there. I got invited to a, a meeting at the Eco Centre um, probably in April and it was the Puffin group that had invited me. I found it fascinating. Food ingredients were travelling so far to get to the plate and some of the facts that came out of that meeting were about food ingredients travelling probably more than 1500 kilometres. So it made me think, as somebody who runs a cafe and a, a bar restaurant in um, St Kilda, it made me think about how we might approach things a little bit differently. We've got a plan to buy all our ingredients from within 100 miles. Probably we can't do coffee, the nearest we can get is Bar and Bar, but it's still pretty close and it's a lot closer than most other coffee uh, sources. Uh, but everything else will come from within 100 miles and we're really excited about getting to the point where we uh, we don't buy anything that comes outside of that, that sort of area. We hope you enjoy this brief guided tour of the Port Phillip Eco Centre here in the beautiful St Kilda Botanical Gardens. We hope to see you down here soon.